I'd now like to show you how to run a t-test in Excel. Now if you've already seen my video finding the t-test using SPSS you'll see the data is inputted into SPSS looking something like this where the groups are labelled here 1 and 2 and the data values were on the right. In Excel you have to show the data a little differently so let me show you how it looks like in Excel. Now I've given group headings group 1 and group 2 they're actually not important you don't need to have those but you'll notice that now they're in columns the groups rather than just all in one line that's the important difference. Okay running a t-test in Excel is very very easy at least on the surface all you do is click any empty cell and like any formula that we're going to put into Excel we just type equals and then t-test t-t-e-s-t -T -E it's already recognized it and if I open the brackets it'll start giving me some helpful hints it says that it's now expecting what it calls array 1 that simply means the first group let me just select group 1 I've not selected the group label then it wants me to put a comma and now we can see, can see in boldface it's waiting for array 2 which are the data points for group 2 so there they are now it wants another comma now it says tails do we want a one tail or a two tail distribution most inferential tests you would put two tails unless you are very uh, have very strong reason to believe that one tail would be enough in other words we're not sure what direction we're going to go in with our results okay one final comma this is where it gets interesting selection one is called paired t-test otherwise known as a dependent uh, test like a before and after selection two is what they call two sample equal variance that would be an independent sample t-test where we are assuming the variance is the same across the two groups selection three similarly is also a two sampled t-test a independent t-test but now where the variance is unequal unlike SPSS it doesn't run both for you you have to run both also unlike SPSS it doesn't give you a measure of the variances it doesn't carry out the Levine's test that's something we're going to have to worry about ourselves so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in 2 to indicate equal variances assumed also known as homogeneity of variance or they've, as they've called it homoscedastic close brackets hit return and what it's given me is a single value which is the p-value related to the two sample t-test. If I compare this to what I got with the SPSS for equal variances assumed there I got a p-value of 0.037 so we're in agreement. Just for comparison let's carry out the test again but this time where we do not assume equal variances so equals t-test open brackets array 1 again I'm not selecting the group label on this occasion comma array 2 this is our group 2 comma it's still a two-tailed comma and this time I'm going to go for option 3 which is the uh, unequal variances assumed close brackets hit return and now it gives a p-value of 0 0.04 etc which is in line with what we got with the SPSS where it was 0 0.041 so on the surface nice and easy there is a little bit more than Excel can do for you because there are some built-in functions called analytical tools. Now there's a very useful add-in you can use to also run a t-test which gives you far more information. To check that you've got the right add-in you're going to File, Options and then click on the add-ins on the left hand list where it says here down the bottom manage your Excel add-ins. Click Go and the one you've got you can see I've already ticked it it's called analysis tool pack if you haven't got it you click the tick then you click OK in order to now access the add-ins you go along the top and select the data tab and there it is it's the only one I've got linked in so I'm going to click on my data analysis add-in and it's got a few inferential tests here let me show you how it works so I'm going to go with the t-test suit to sample assuming equal variance just like we did on the top one click OK it's saying what is your variable 1 range for your input 
Now here if I want I can include the labels, don't have to. For the second one I'm going to put in my group 2, again including the labels and because I've included the labels I'm just going to tick where it says labels. Hypothesize mean difference, well the null hypothesis for the vast majority of inferential tests are that there was no difference. So I'll put zero. Alpha I'm going to leave is 0.05, that is the significance of the test and I'm going to work with that commonly adopted uh, choice for alpha of significance which is the probability of a type 1 error, the probability of getting a false positive. Now output range, instead of putting it into a new worksheet, I'm just clicked on output range, click on that box, you can select a, a, a part uh, of it, I'll just click a cell for now and then click OK. OK, it's now going to run the t-test and you'll notice I get way more information. It's given me the mean of the two groups, 4.3 versus 7.9, their variances, as you can see, they, they don't look too similar. Then you've got your sample size, then you have your pooled variance, where they have taken a kind of an average of the two variances, so they're not work, working with one or the other. I remind you of your hypothesis mean difference, your degrees of freedom, DF, that is always um, each group take away 1, so it's 10 for the first group, take away 1 is 9, plus 10 for the second group, take away 1 is another 9, that gives us 18. Another important big difference between what we did with the equals t-test quick function is that it actually gives us the t-statistic. It then gives us a p-value which we did not ask for, which is the one tail. Um, it tells us the critical region for the t-test, which you shouldn't worry about unless you're looking these things up in tables. Um, and the important thing that we can compare with last time, there it is, 0.374, etc. So it's giving you more information, but interestingly, like the first test we just ran, it doesn't allow us to decide whether we should have our variances assumed to be equal or not. They don't look the same, but is the difference down to chance or not? For completeness. Let's just run the same test where the two samples do not assume to be equal variance. So click on data analysis, go back to our list. So now we're going to assume unequal variances, click OK. And for our range 1, we put group 1. For our range 2, I think it's already loaded so let me just put it in again. Hypothesize mean is 0. Labels are still included in the way I selected them. My significance level is still 0 0.05. And now for the output range, we've selected cell 21. Let's see if it works. Checking the, the p-value we got before, we got 0 0.0405, 0 0.0401. Interesting. I have no idea why that's the case. Okay. Everything else does check out pretty much reasonably. Yep, same means, same variances. So the same information that you would get from the first time we ran the t-test, uh, as we saw before, more information than the simple equals t-test function. However, we have a problem, and that is which of these two t-tests should we read the answers for? Which one should we report? it would not really look that impressive just to quote both. We have to carry out a Levine's test. And there does not seem to be a function, a built-in function for Levine's test in Excel. So that one we have to solve a different way.